Are you oppressed? Are you battling with sickness? Are you struggling with addiction or feeling stuck and you don't know where to turn to? Are you seeking direction or purpose? Or perhaps you're seeking satisfaction and fulfillment? Can God bring a solution to you in just 30 minutes? Oh yes, He can! This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he had the presence of God, he comes to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can you doing my beautiful family how are you welcome 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 to your hour of solution this is your time of solution this is your moment of solution I don't care what mountain of problems that may be facing you but listen this is the time that the Lord has brought solution to you through his word in the word of the Lord is wrapped up the power of God the presence of God the anointing of God the glory of God everything that God is is wrapped up in his word and I just pray that as I bring his word to you today I pray that whatever area of your life that the enemy is raising his ugly head against you he shall come crumbling down in the name of Jesus every mountain of problem before you I command it to become plain in the name of Jesus even as I speak now let the power of God be released into your being to heal you into your bank account to heal your finances into your business to give you business breakthrough into your career to give you career breakthrough into your resume your CV to bring you gainful gainful employment in the name of Jesus let the grace of God speak for you let the favor of God begin to open a common doors for you doors that you have not even knocked on let the favor of God go before you and begin to open those doors doors that no man can can shut doors that no power can shut be open unto you in the name of Jesus you are going to come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus hallelujah I just felt it in my spirit right now that there is somebody watching me and you are worried about your children your children have left home and they've not come back two children I don't know I just felt it in my spirit two children you're worried about them they've not returned back home I pray that wherever those children are let the Holy Spirit begin to walk in their hearts begin to speak to them let them come back home in the name of Jesus I release angels to go search for your children and bring your children back to you in safety in the name of Jesus we pray amen hallelujah if you're sick in your body father we ask for mercy we ask for mercy we ask for mercy we ask for mercy let the mercy of God speak for you let healing be released unto you now let the power of God touch you wherever you're feeling that sickness whatever you're sick in your body pain in your body whatever doctors report you have received let the healing power of God bring healing to you now in Jesus name amen hallelujah we appreciate you father hallelujah thank you Lord who I feel the anointing so strong thank you father well my name is Tessitani and I am here to let you know that God loves you and God desire for you to be the kind of man that he has created you to be what kind of man are we talking about I was looking at my Bible and I discovered by the help of the Holy Spirit and through his teaching I discovered that the Apostle Paul divides the human race into three major categories. We are going to look at those three major categories today. I want you to pay attention, get your book, get your notebook and your pen and take notes so that you can always go back and study on this truth. Be like the Berean Christians who the scripture tells us that they went back and studied. They went back and they searched the scriptures. 
they search the scriptures. So I challenge you to go back and always search the scriptures. Don't let anybody tell you about God. Don't let anybody tell you who God is. Know God for yourself. I made that decision many years ago. I said, Lord, I don't want somebody to just keep teaching me or telling me about you. I don't just want to know about you. I want to know you. There is a big difference. I tell you, my sisters and my brothers, there is a big difference between knowing about God and knowing God. So my prayer for you this day is that you will come to that place of not just knowing about God, but actually knowing God in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Father. So I want us to turn our scriptures to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Let's see what the word of the Lord says. Father, breathe upon your word. Open our ears to hear you loud and clear. Open our hearts to understand what your spirit is saying to us. And give us, O oh Lord, the discipline to practice these words that you are going to teach us today. They will not just fall to the ground. Father, we will come back with results as we put them into practice. Hundredfold results in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 reads, But a natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Praise God. The Apostle Paul divides human race into three major categories. The first one we are going to look at today is the natural man. Who is the natural man? The second one is the carnal man or the fleshly man. When you say somebody is carnal, it means the person is still led by their flesh. They've not allowed the Holy Spirit to take over their life, to take control of them. They are not led by the Holy Spirit. They are led by their flesh. So the natural man, we are going to be looking at the natural man, the carnal man, and then the spiritual man. These are the three categories of, you know, men that we are going to be examining. We are not going to be able, of course, to look into these things today because the Lord, the Holy Spirit actually told me, he said, stop rushing through the message that I've given to you. He said, even if you have to go back and keep doing series and keep, you know, doing part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, he said, be ready to do that. So do not rush it because I have people that I want to speak to. So I am here on authority. I am under authority. So I am not going to rush through this. God help me. I am going to take my time. So we are not going to go through the three kinds of men today. So let's start from the first one. The first one is the natural man. And the, at the end of the day, the goal of this is for you to examine yourself and say, what kind of man am I right now? What is my spiritual level? Where am I at in my Christian journey? And then after you examine yourself, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you submit yourself to him. If you are not the kind of man that God wants you to be, you submit yourself and say, Lord, make me become the kind of man that you want me to be. That is the goal. That is the purpose. And I pray that the Lord will help us to achieve that in Jesus name. Amen. So. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the Apostle Paul, he was writing to these Christians. He said, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. As Paul spoke to these people, saying that, listen, the natural man, they cannot understand the things of God. They cannot receive the things of God, because the things of God, they are not, God does not speak to our flesh. God speaks to our spirits. Hallelujah. The scripture says that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So the Lord connects with us 
through our spirits. Hallelujah. So listen to this. A spirit that has not been renewed. A spirit that has not been born again. I'm saying anyone who have not accepted the Lord Jesus to become their Lord and personal Savior. Anyone who have not yet given their life to Christ. The Apostle Paul here is saying that they cannot understand the things of the spirit. How many of us have been there? I have been there when somebody told me that Jesus is real and I'm like what is that I, I don't believe that I don't believe in Jesus I have been there I don't know if you've been there I don't know if you are there right now but listen I came to the point where I had to say I believe that Jesus is real by faith the Holy Spirit brought that conviction to my heart that made me believe in my heart that Jesus is real. And then I confessed with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Because that is what the scripture tells us in Romans, that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth, we shall be saved. So everyone has to make that confession. And here the word of the Lord is saying that anyone who have not believed in their heart, anyone who have not made that confession, anyone who is still living by their human nature that is the sinful nature listen let me take a step back when a man is born into this world with an inherited sin the, a man may not have committed any sin from when they were born to when they were eight, 14 or 10 or 16 or 20 or even 40. Some people say, oh, I'm a very good man. I don't touch any unclean thing. I don't do any evil. But listen, no matter how clean your slate has been, Jesus told us that the only way the only way to become his child, the only way to break free, to be delivered from the sinful nature that was inherited but be, due to the sins of Adam and Eve, Jesus said the only way is to be born again. Hallelujah. Is to be born again. That means is to believe in our hearts that Jesus is the son of God, is to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, is to accept Jesus into our hearts, praise God. So the natural man is a man who has not done this. You may not have committed any sin by yourself, but the scripture says in Romans chapter 3, that for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So when you are born into this world, you have fallen short of the glory of God. You have sinned, not because you committed sin yourself, but because the sin of Adam and Eve is upon everyone that is born into this world. Praise God. So the natural man is a man who is still carrying this inherited sin. The natural man is the man who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They have not believed that Jesus is Lord. The natural man, his human spirit has never been made alive to God. He is dead to sin. Hallelujah. He has not yet accepted the righteousness that comes from God through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross. The natural man is spiritually dead. He's spiritually dead. A dead man cannot feel. A dead man cannot hear. If somebody is right here now and the person is dead, the person has been confirmed dead and I'm talking to the person, or I bring a game and I'm telling this person, let us play this game together, or I bring food and I'm telling the person, let us eat. Anybody that sees me will know that something has gone wrong. Praise God. May something not go wrong with our mind in Jesus' name. But I'm just trying to tell you that a dead man cannot talk. A dead man cannot feel. A dead man cannot smell. A dead man cannot hear. You see people on the street who have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, they cannot see. They have hearts, but they cannot believe. Hallelujah. They just cannot. Because See, you may see people dress beautiful, adorned and find the most beautiful, expensive jewelries. But listen, they are blind. 
they are deaf. Why? Because they have not allowed the light of the gospel, hallelujah, to flood their hearts. They have resisted the Holy Spirit. They have not allowed their heart to be convicted, hallelujah. So listen, they are spiritually dead. And because they are spiritually dead, they cannot hear. When you tell them Jesus is real, they have ears, but they cannot hear you. Hallelujah. Satan, the God of this world, have blinded their eyes and deafened their ears. I pray for you that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. And if you're listening to me right now and you're thinking, that sounds like me. I have never received the Lord Jesus. I have never believed in Jesus. I think the person she's describing sounds like me. I am so happy for you because this is your day of salvation. This message is not to condemn you, but this message is to open your eyes to see the light of the gospel. This message is to open your ears and your heart to hear the truth of the gospel and understand that Jesus is Lord and he loves you and he wants to save you. So I'm going to be praying with you shortly. So the natural man, hallelujah, he's the man that needs to be saved. Acts 16, 31 reads, So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. So the natural man is the man who has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore he is not saved. What is the consequence of such situation? A man who dies in such states will go to hell. I have to preach the truth to you. The Lord told me not to hide anything. He sent me on errand. He said, I want you to bring the gospel message to my people and I want you to preach it in simplicity and in truth. So I'm not going to sit here and try to water it down and say, I don't want to preach about hell. I don't want to preach about sin. I don't want people to be upset. Listen, I have to tell you the truth. Why? Because I love you. Because I am under authority. Because if I don't tell you the message that was given to me, the Lord will hold me accountable hallelujah and i do not want to be responsible for the blood of anyone so i have to tell you the truth that a natural man if he dies in that state of not having be saved by jesus christ he will go to hell the scripture says that it is appointed unto men to die once once and after that it is judgment hallelujah Karabo Shandarabaya. So he has never been saved. Thank you, Father. So his life is dominated by his sinful nature. That means the nature that he inherited from Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. It is this nature which accounts for all of the weaknesses of the natural man, such as the anger, the jealousy, the sinful lifestyle, which the, the natural man produces. The natural man is in tumor. The natural man does not have relationship with God. The natural man is not at peace with self. The natural man cannot have good relationship with other people because everything that has to do with sin. The natural man is in prison. He is in a prison of sin. He is in bondage to sin. He is a slave of Satan. Satan is the Lord of the natural man. Hallelujah. But I'm grateful to God for sending his son Jesus Christ who came, who suffered, who died. And the Bible says ha -ha, that he translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of of his marvelous light. So the natural man is the man who is still in the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Karabo Shandarabaya. So if you're watching me right now and you are saying, I think she's talking to me, I have never ever given my life to Christ. Congratulations, because today is your day of salvation, like I said before. So now let us look at the other kind of man, the carnal. The Bible refers to this other kind of man as the carnal or the fleshly man. The carnal man, let us read quickly 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal 
as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it, my God. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? So the Apostle Paul here is now addressing believers who can no longer be called the natural men. Why? Because these people have given their life to Christ. They've come to accept that I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. They've said, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins. Come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. They have made a born again confession. But guess what? They are still living like people who have not come to the Lord. They are still living like the people who have not been born again. So the Apostle Paul was telling those people, listen, I cannot give you solid food. All I am still giving you at this time is milk. I am still feeding you with milk because if I give you solid food, you will not be able to receive it. He said, look at you. There is division among you. There is jealousy among you. There is quarreling among you. There is envy among you. He says, are you not carnal? You are acting like mere men. What does mere men mean? It means ordinary men. Because a Christian, a child of God, cannot be ordinary. Because the moment we got born again and said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus comes into your heart. That means as I'm sitting here, I am carrying Jesus in my heart. I am full of the Holy Spirit. I am full of Jesus. So I do not call myself an ordinary woman. I am extraordinary. Not by my own strength or power, but because the power of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus lives on the inside of me. So this makes me become extraordinary. This makes me become supernatural. But the apostle Paul was telling those people, listen, you have given your lives to Christ. Christ now lives in your heart. He said, but you go back and start acting as people who have not given their lives to Christ at all. You are acting like ordinary men. You are acting like mere men. Don't we have that today? It is very common today. People say they are Christians by their lips. But when you look at their lifestyle, you are like, my goodness, I cannot speak to you like a Christian. I cannot give you solid food. Why? Because you are still acting like a baby. Some people got born again five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago. But they have not realized that the Christian walk is a walk of faith that you keep walking. You allow God to keep renewing your mind. You allow God to keep breaking things off you. It is a walk of, you're walking to be like Jesus. You are not just saying, hey, I've given my life to Christ. That's it. No, it is a journey where you are daily taking your cross and becoming more like Jesus. That is what it is. We are to be disciples. Disciples means becoming like Christ, laying aside every weight, every sin, everything that pulls us back, that weighs us down, laying them aside every day and becoming more like Jesus, walking our way to perfection. Hallelujah. That is what it is. We are not supposed to just say, I've given my life to Christ and just stop there. Giving your life to Christ, listen, it is just an entrance. It's like you've been lost and now the door has been opened. You are now found and the Lord is saying, welcome home, my child. But it is only an entry point. There is a walk that you have to walk. What is that walk? Becoming more like Christ. 
allowing yourself to be discipled, studying the word of God and becoming more like Christ, renewing your mind according to Romans 12 2. It says that we should not be confirmed to the things of this world. We should not be like the world, but we should be transformed. How? By renewing our mind. How do we renew our mind? By looking at the word of God. The Lord says bitterness is a sin. Ah, I used to have bitterness in my heart when I was in the world. But now that I am a child of God and the scripture says that bitterness is a sin, I begin to look up to God and begin to pray. It doesn't mean people will not hurt you. It doesn't mean your emotions will not feel it that you are hurt. But you go to God and say, Lord, help me to heal. Help me to forgive help me to handle this issue as a christian not as an unbeliever you see that the word of god says flee fornication you take your phone now you call that boy or that girl that you used to have sex with and you say listen this has got to stop why because I am now born again. I am now a child of God. And the Bible tells me that my body is not my own, but it is the temple of God. So I have got to respect God's temple. If you truly love me, wait till we get married before we start to have, you know, sexual contact. Because God made it for married couples, not for those who are not married yet. Hallelujah. You look at the word of God and it says anger. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. You are angry and you remember the word of the Lord says I should have self-control. I should not let the sun go down on my anger. And then you begin to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to overcome that. Hallelujah. So I am going to continue from here, from talking about the Kanama. We have looked at the natural man. We are talking about the Kanama. But because of time, I am going to take it from here next week. I don't want you to miss this. I want you to make sure that you stay tuned and you are here because the Lord has a lot to teach us because he wants to change us. He wants to break things off us. He wants to transform us. He wants to wake up from our slumber to become Christians, individuals who carry his fire who will take the gospel message to the ends of the earth so i want to pray for you if you can identify with being a natural man or a kind of man and you say she's talking about me listen god wants to save you right now all you need to do is say lord jesus you have spoken to me today i have heard your message i am natural man i am a kind of man have mercy on me forgive me of all my sins wipe them away fill me with your holy spirit give me another chance and help me to become like you jesus help me to live a life that is pleasing to you help me to follow you help me to know you and be more like you every day of my life in jesus name we pray amen if you just said those prayers congratulations god bless you find a bible believing church wherever you are and begin to worship god in spirit and in truth i'll see you next week Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.